everyone, Christina here. Thanks for joining us for the very first Lettering Snacks box ever. This is our very first quarter and we are so excited to jump right in and show you guys what we have in store for you. So first I'm gonna walk you through the items that are in the box. I'm gonna op open up the box, see what's inside. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each item and what it can do. We're going to explore a little bit with them. Then I'm going to head into a quick lesson, and this is going to be showing you my style that I like to use with the Pentel sign brush or brush pen, and it can also be adapted to many other different tools and supplies. And then I'm going to walk you through a really simple project, and then I'm going to step that up a bit and show you the, those same principles from the project in a slightly larger project. So if you want to skip ahead in the video at all, I'll have timestamps over here so that you can skip along, or if you watch the entire video and then want to go back to a specific section, you can do that too. So let's get started. So here is the box with all of our fun lettering goodies inside. Let's get this open and see what is inside. So wrapped up in tissue paper, I'm just going to tear this open a little bit so that I can reveal everything that's inside. And the first thing that I see when I open it up is this eight by eight pad of paper. This has 15 sheets in it, it's from Legion, and this is their Stonehenge warm white paper. Um, this paper is really, really nice. It's got a nice thickness to it. Um, it's got a little bit of texture, not a lot of texture, not like a watercolor paper or anything like that, but it does handle uh, watercolor and more wet mediums very well. So you get 15 full sheets. They are square, which is really unusual. You don't find a lot of uh, fine art papers that are square. They're most likely going to be rectangular. So here's my little snack that's in my box. I have a cherry airhead. And I'm going to set that aside for a snack later. And then I have a Pentel Arts signed brush pen. Now I got this blue color in my box, but uh, you might get a different color in yours. I really love this pen. It's got a nice um, like rubber tip that um, it's got a little bit more, it has give to it like a regular brush, but it's a little more stiff, so it's great for beginners. And then I have this Molotov Graphics Aqua Ink Pump Soft Liner. It's quite a long name here. This is a really cool marker, and I'll show you a little bit more about it in a bit. But it does have instructions on the marker itself. So if you want to try it out on your own without watching the video, you definitely can. Um, this is a great kind of brush chip marker to cover big areas. So now we have this lettering snacks canvas zip bag and it's got a fun uh, limited edition pin on it too. I'm going to open it up and inside there are eight Ecoline brush pens. Now I have been eyeing these brush pens for a long time. Um, I know a lot of lettering artists use the Ecoline of watercolors and these brush pens are really fun because it actually has watercolor pigment in the brush pen. So you can add um, a wet paint brush or a water brush to it. You can do a lot of fun things or you can just write directly to paper with the brush tip. So everyone is getting the same eight colors. So that's really kind of fun. So now I'm going to just sort of experiment with the different products that are in the box. And I really suggest doing this whenever you buy anything new to add to your lettering stash. It's always a great idea to, especially if it's different colors, to kind of swatch them out, see what they look like, so that you are more familiar with your tools and supplies. The more familiar you are with them, the better you can use them and utilize every feature that comes with them. So these Ecoline brush pens are really juicy. That's the first thing that I noticed when I was trying these out. Um, especially when I'm pressing on the brush tip more on those down strokes, it's putting out quite a bit of watercolor pigment. So you'll notice, especially on um, the red violet, you can see it right now, that the upper half of the letters seem a little bit more saturated than the bottom half. The very bottom seem a little bit lighter and that's because that is naturally where I let up on the pressure. So as I do that thick line coming down and release the pressure going back up, it doesn't put out as much color, which is kind of cool. You get a little bit of a gradient effect or an ombre effect without having to do anything really special or extra to get that look. So it's really kind of cool. 
So you've got red, violet, green, vermilion, light orange, chartreuse, and this reddish brown. It's kind of like a brick red. It's really, really pretty and an unusual color too. I generally gravitate more toward like primary colors or even jewel tone colors. So this reddish brown is a great addition to my stash. There's also a warm gray and then black. So I wanted to show you up close some little features about this. There's that two color like light on the upstroke. And then also right here, it stays wet for quite a long time. Not long, but just longer than usual than you would, than you would think for a regular marker. So just something to be aware of. So I'm gonna take this water brush Unfortunately, this water brush is not in the kit, but you could use a wet paintbrush or anything like that. I just wanted to show you that after this marker is dry, it is still water soluble. So you can come back in and spread that color out. I also experimented by taking a lighter color, so that chartreuse color, and adding the green right on top. And then I'm going to take my water brush and kind of spread out that color. And that's going to add a different look to that chartreuse line. So that's another way that you can combine your, your different colors and tools. So I'm going to spread this out with that paintbrush and get that gradient really, really nice and smooth. This would be a cool technique to do if you had a really large word and you wanted to add some sections to make it look three-dimensional. So you can scribble onto a slick surface and then pick up the watercolor pigment with a water brush. So this is that same red violet shade, but I'm picking up the color with a water brush. It's actually the red violet and the reddish brown mixed. I put them both on there. So you can get a different look if you pick up the pigment using a different brush. So this is kind of cool. It's a great way to stretch all of those supplies. So I thought it also would be kind of fun to experiment by mixing the Pentel Sign Pen with the Ecoline brush pens. So I'm going to show you what the, the Pentel pen looks like on its own. That's that normal blue color that I have. And then I've scribbled out some black Ecoline marker onto my slick surface over here. And you can see that when I combine them, the tip of the blue marker becomes really dark and then as I keep writing with it it returns to its normal shade. So this is another way to really stretch your marker, get more use out of it, and do some really fun effects. So I'm going to uh, set this aside. I'm going to clean up my slick surface here. I just use a piece of plastic for packaging for my slick surface. You could use some glass or a ceramic plate, anything that's slick like that. So now we're going to explore the Molotov Graphics Aqua Ink Pump Soft Liner. So the first thing you have to do is break that seal, get the cap off. I'm going to put the cap back on and shake it up. Make sure all of that pigment inside is nice and smooth. Then remove the cap and place it down onto your work surface. You're going to take the tip of the brush and put it in the top of the cap. Give it a little tiny pump. Now if a bunch of uh, ink pops out. It's okay. That's what happened with mine. I just kind of moved the tip of the brush inside the cap and soaked up all of that color. So now I have a fully loaded brush tip and I'm going to experiment and kind of get the feel of this marker. So the paper that I'm working on is actually a practice sheet and these practice sheets are downloadable PDFs. Uh, you can download them in the same area where you're viewing this video and just print them out on your home computer or take them to a print shop or however you like to have things printed and just print out a few sheets for you to practice on. I find that I love practicing on lined paper like this. So it has a nice spring to the brush tip and it also, because you can compress it down and make that tip really, really wide, you can cover a big surface area with this brush marker as well. So I'm going to show you a side view here. You can see how that tip of the marker really does bend down quite a bit. And I'm going to slow it down so you can see it even better. Um, I'm really only using half of that brush tip while I'm writing. So if you wanted to write with an even thicker to thin contrast or just a thicker bold line, 
you could press this marker down all the way. It bends really far. You can bend, I can press it down to where the plastic is almost touching the surface of the paper and you can get a really thick line. It's a really versatile marker and that you can get extremely thin to very, very thick lines as well. I also wanted to mention that um, this is a great marker if you want to try out um, kind of getting a more rhythmic writing. So up, down, up, down, and on the down strokes, there's a nice thick line to go with that. So I'm just writing out minimum. It's one of my most favorite words to try out when I'm using different products. So I'm going to set this marker aside and we're actually going to go into sort of the lesson portion of the video and we're going to be using that Pentel sign pen for this. So here are those practice sheets that I mentioned. In the PDF there are six sheets. There are three that have a diagonal slanted guideline and then three that have a vertical up and down guideline. And there are also uh, all of the lowercase letters and then some words and then a blank sheet. So you can see over here the difference between the slanted guideline and the up and down guideline. So you can kind of mix and match or practice things out, see what you like best. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through um, all of the letter, lowercase letters for the up and down guided sheets. So when I started out doing calligraphy, I liked to keep my guides very up and down so I didn't have to worry about that slant because as you're learning how to do lettering and calligraphy with a brush tip marker or even if you're using a chisel tip or anything like that, um, one of the ways you can really advance and help your lettering look more precise is by always keeping the same slant to your letters. So most people are very used to writing their letters with an up and down, like straight up and down a vertical line through them, if that makes sense. Um, when you tip it and have a little bit more of a slanted guideline, that's when you get a little bit more into the, the fancier or italic calligraphy, things like that. And when it's slanted, it's often hard to keep it very consistent. So when I started out calligraphy, I like, I like to keep things very up and down. And by using these vertical lines on the practice sheets and constantly rechecking in your mind, okay, am, am I doing it right along that vertical line? That will help you as you practice all of your letter forms. And you'll see that it's more consistent and you can get a better look and a better polished look to your letters if you're very consistent with that. So here's a side view of showing that thick and thin. So I'm using a very thin or very light touch on that upstroke. And then as I curve around the top, I'm going to press my marker down into the paper more to get that thick line and then let up the pressure as I come back up to finish the, the other half of the letter F. So this is actually one of my most favorite lowercase letters because I love that really long downstroke, that big loop coming down to the very bottom and then light pressure coming back up. I think it's really fun. I also really love all of the letters that resemble the letter A. So you notice the beginning part of a letter G is just like an A. So I like G's and I like A's. I also like D's because that has that same beginning loop. So as you start studying letters and start practicing them more and more, you'll realize how they all relate to each other. Like the letter I right here is very close to a letter J. It's almost the same. The only thing you have to do is add a little loop at the very bottom. And also the letter J is similar to a G and a Y because it has that loop coming down below the line and it's a great opportunity to add loops or swashes to your lettering. So here's the letter K. The letter K is one of those letters that just kind of stands off on its own. It's it's not really the same or similar to other letters except for that vertical line that you've got going at the beginning there. So I'm going to do a really thick downstroke. I'm pressing that marker into the paper quite a bit. Thin coming up 
and then I keep it a little bit thicker coming down on the right side of that letter. I did want to mention something that I've noticed when I use these Pentel sign brush pens and I noticed this right off the bat. I've been using these for a few years now. When you first use your marker it's going to seem really stiff. Uh, you're going to get really thin lines. It's going to be very easy to get a very thin line and you have to press quite a bit to get that thicker line. As you use your marker more and more the brush tip will soften a little bit and you'll be able to get thicker downstrokes and you'll have to use even lighter pressure to get those lighter strokes. So I think for about, I don't know, maybe the first, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 letters that I write with a brand new Pentel sign brush pen, those letters always look a little bit thinner than the ones that I write later on. So it's always a good idea to practice with this brush marker um, get that kind of stiffness out of the marker a little bit until it's a consistent, more of a consistent pressure, if that makes sense. That's what I just noticed with these, with these particular pens. So it's just something to keep an eye on. So moving on, I've got a letter Q. Q is also like an A. It's got that beginning kind of loop at the very start. Really like the Q's as well because I love that loop at the bottom. Okay, so the letter R. This is one that I really struggled with. So I wanted to show you guys um, how to write it straight above, and then I'm going to give you a, a slow, more slow version from an angle. So what I like to do with the letter R is I keep a very light hand, a very light stroke coming up and through that loop. And then I'll pause right here just a tiny bit, add pressure, and then come down. So for my particular style of writing like this, uh, it's very noticeable that I have a little tiny pause right there and then pull it down. And depending on your style and or what type of writing you're doing, it might be a little bit different. But in my mind, if I think, okay, I've got a pause here before I have that downstroke, that really helps me get a more consistent look. I'm going to show it one more time without the gray guide underneath. Bring that down. I love the lowercase letter R. I love it. S's are another one that's a little bit harder to get a handle on, but just practice every day and it will get easier and easier. So the letter T is really fun because you can change up the ways you do the crossbar. So I've got a little loop on that one and here's a really, really big one. It's just really fun to mix this up. The letter U is really fun to do because it's got a lot of rhythm to it, just up and down, up and down. And then I really love the letter V and also the letter W because they both have this fun little loop up at the top. There aren't very many other letters that have a particular loop at the top or at that um, connection point that's higher. The other letters all connect from the bottom. So here's the W. I really love this one. And then I'm going to show you the letter X. And I rarely write the letter X, but it's still kind of fun to practice. It's one of those really different looking letters. So I, I love the letter Y. I love all the opportunity for the loop at the bottom. You can make a really big loop or a smaller one. And the more you uh, kind of look for different letter forms or different ways to write these letters and really expand your visual vocabulary in your mind, you'll be able to make more adventurous design choices in your lettering. So one of the practice sheets has some words on it. And these two words, aluminum and minimum, are two of my most favorite words to practice. And that's because there's lots of up, down, up, down, up, down. There's a lot of really fun rhythm with these. So it's fun to practice these out. And this one is really blurry for most of the beginning of the word here. So I'm going to switch to my other footage that I took while I was doing it and show you this side version. And you'll notice that this has a lot of rhythm of going up and down, up and down. This is a really great practice word or almost like a drill word to help you get the spacing between your letters just right. So I'm going to write out minimum. I'm going to show you one more word and then we're going to move on. I'm going to write out the word friendship. This is one of the words that I really like to write 
and for practice because I do write the word friend quite a bit. A lot of the quotes that I do have the word friend in them and they also have lots of S's to H's to, for, you know, this right here, the combination of S to H. And then also I like to have the beginning of the word with an F. I think that's a really great practice word. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to some small little projects. So I've taken that eight by eight paper and I've trimmed it down, I've cut it down into four equal squares. And I thought it would just be easy to write out a very short phrase. So I'm using the phrase, try your best. There's three words and there's an opportunity with the word in the center to do something a little bit different. So I'm writing out using the warm gray Ecoline brush pen having it just say try your best. And I'm going to try different combinations of lettering styles for all four of these small squares. So this first one, I have really big, thick, up and down letters. And then I'm adding a very thin lined, slanted lettering. It's a little bit more intricate and delicate. And I'm mixing those two and having them overlap. So here's the first one. I'm gonna switch it up for the next one by slanting the thicker letters. So I'm doing the slant here this time. I'm gonna bring that loop down really nice. Nice big crossbar swash. And then I'm going to do this pretty much the same letters, but just put them on a slant. So this is just kind of a little exercise in different styles. I really liked that thinner blue line with the Pentel sign brush pen. So I'm gonna use that same style coming in. This is just a really great way to try out different combinations of lettering styles. Just do small phrases and do quite a few of them. So now I'm testing out different color and I thought it'd be fun to bring in this red violet shade. I'm gonna draw out the word try again. Then I'm going to switch it up and go to the green marker and I'm also going to change the word best. I thought it would be kind of fun to try something that was a little bit more simple. So I'm doing very simple capital letters and I really like the contrast and juxtaposition of the diagonal thick letters with the very straight up and down capital letters. I'm going to add some small details, some serifs on the ends of these letters. It was a little bit more of a polished finished look. And then I'll take that same blue marker and this is the one element that didn't really change much for these first three examples. So for my fourth example, which is the one that I really, really loved, I'm gonna do that same try in the red violet shade. I really liked how that looked. And I really love this shade of pinkish purple as well. Then I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to use that Molotov purple marker that I was using before. So I'm going to test this one out and I'll get writing with it. So I'm gonna do that same best that I did in green, but I'm switching up the colors this time. And the one thing I wanted to mention about this particular marker is that I noticed that after I kind of prime it, like I pump the brush tip to get lots of pigment in there, that it's really intense. It's a very dark, it's a very dark purple, almost looks black. And if you don't want it to be quite that dark, go ahead and scribble out some of the color um, just so that it can get rid of some of that intense shade. So now I'm gonna use that slick palette, just a piece of uh, plastic for packaging, to put out some of that red violet shade and then pick it up with my blue Pentel sign brush pen. And this is going to alter the color that comes out of the brush pen, just like I showed earlier in the video. So you'll notice that this color is a little bit more of a toned blue. It's not quite as bright blue as the other examples. So I'm just gonna put this in here and I like that it has a mixture of color and gives it a different look. All right, so I took this example of the two styles of writing and um, I'm gonna add just some shadow onto both of those styles. Technically, there's three different styles of lettering here. I have the thicker on a slant, thinner on a slant, and then a very large, thick, up and down capital letter. So it's kind of fun to kind of mix these different styles.
So I'm using the warm gray eco line brush pen and I'm adding some shadows to the sides of all of these letters. This will just give it a little bit of a different look. All right, the last part of this video, thanks for hanging in there, I know it's pretty long. Um, the last part is I wanted to show you an example of a, a slightly larger project using the same principles from that kind of little study that I just did. Doing the capital letters and mixing that with the thinner lined delicate slanted writing. So I'm going to write out this quote using the chartreuse eco line brush pen and then I'm going to use that same blue Pentel sign brush pen and I'm going to put those in between. So one thing that works really well for um, kind of like two different styles of writing like this is to look for phrases that have sort of like a repeating element. So this particular quote that I'm using today has three short phrases and they also have uh, a word at the beginning of each phrase that I can use with with the more bold lettering. So the three words are start, use, and do. And then I can go ahead and bring in that blue, more delicate writing and write in the remaining of the phrases. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I did pencil out some guidelines on the paper before I started. You can see the pencil lines on there. So because the pigment coming out of the Ecoline brush pens is watercolor, and watercolor does tend to trap a pencil, um, my guidelines where the pencil is, they're actually going to be trapped underneath the letters. So I won't be able to erase them in the end. You might want to keep that in mind as you're doing a project because um, if you don't want any pencil lines, you might want to be careful about where you uh, pencil in your guidelines. So I have a guideline that goes down the center of my paper here, a vertical line. I think if I was going to do this again, I would probably erase that vertical line in the sections where my yellow writing was going to be. Just because uh, in the finished product. I didn't like those vertical pencil lines going through the letter S right there in the center. Uh, it was a little bit, it's a little bit nitpicky of me, but I really didn't like that look. So if I was going to do this again, I think I would probably just erase those vertical lines there. So I'm using that blue pen and finish things off. Having fun with the different crossbars on that letter T, how it extends from one word over to the other. I wanted to mention that I actually did this phrase, I think, three or four times before I got it to where I wanted, wanted it. So a lot of times you only see the finished product and you think, oh wow, how did they do that? Well, they did it multiple times before they got the one they wanted. So don't be afraid to try things out, really experiment, and then go on to your final piece. That's why it's so fantastic that we have 15 sheets of this paper to work with in the box because sometimes you need a couple practice runs. So I'm adding the, the originator of this quote and then I'll take my eraser and just erase those pencil lines. You can see that it doesn't really erase completely from the lettering. And that finishes the project. Thanks for joining me for the video for the very first lettering snacks. I hope you guys are excited to jump in and get started. We'll be back very soon with lots more fun in next quarter's box. Thanks for watching.